Every day when we go into the sanctity of our offices, we're putting our health in danger. As we sit in our chairs, turn on our computers, and settle in for a day of writing, designing, sending emails, playing games, or shopping online, oops, scratch those last two, we are putting our back and our knees at risk. I'm sure many of you work with people who've had back surgery or knee surgery. This is a huge drain on productivity. If you've had to suffer so bad to the point where surgery is the only option and then suffer through the post-op recovery, then you're a believer and this video is not for you. I'm aiming at those who want to avoid this fate, if at all possible. So here are a few things to think about the next time you unlock that office door and step inside. Eight weeks after back surgery, in 1986, Joe Montana, then age 30, was back quarterbacking the 49ers. To everyone's amazement, the 49ers won 43-17, and Montana was 13 of 19 for 270 yards with three touchdowns, eight weeks after back surgery. Yes, Joe had access to the best health care, and he had undergone an intensive rehab program. But what has stuck with me all these years is one part of his recovery regimen featured in a television interview. His doctor told him to keep his abdomen taut at all times. And to make sure of that, the doctor enlisted Joe's wife, Jennifer, to punch Joe in the belly to make sure he kept his abdomen rigid so the punch wouldn't hurt. The best thing you can do for your back, the doctor said, was to suck in your abdomen and keep it taut. Likewise with your knees, keeping a muscle opposite in good shape, in this case your hamstrings, can help serve as protection. I heard that from a doctor when my oldest son, while in high school, faced the possibility of knee surgery. The doctor's words were, the best thing you can do for your knees is stretch your hamstrings. He recommended a daily exercise routine that included figure fours on the floor, stretching over one leg and then the other. So what does this mean to you in the workplace? Should you ask someone to catch you off guard with a punch to the midsection just to make sure you're sucking it in? Thanks, Adam. No problem, Craig. Instead, make sure you have a chair with support for your back. Buy a lumbar roll if you need to. Find a comfortable angle for your legs, which may mean investing in a footrest. And even when you're sitting, it's still important to suck it in and sit up straight and not hunch over your computer. About sitting, don't sit for too long without standing up to take a break. Think in terms of 15 to 20 minute intervals. Stoop instead of bending over to get into a low file drawer or pick something up off the floor. And if nobody's looking, or even if they are, reach over and touch your toes every once in a while to stretch your hamstrings. want to abandon the sitting desk altogether and opt for a standing one or one that does both. That's what LSU Ag Center web designer Megan Smith did. She has an adjustable desk that she can raise or lower so she can either sit or stand while she works. Back in 2010, I had back surgery from a car accident. I was having uh, some severe pain. Uh, it has definitely made me engage my core muscles more and um, actually I feel like I think better standing. It was not expensive. Uh, it was comparable to other office furniture. It's well worth the price. To protect your back and your knees at the office, stand up straight, sit up straight, suck in your gut. Stoop instead of bend over to get into low file drawers, stretch your hamstrings every day, and get out of your office and go for a walk at least once a day, especially if you work on a college campus. You don't have to be a professional athlete, like Joe Montana, to keep your back and knees healthy in the workplace.
<clears throat> Break time's up. Let's get back to work. And don't forget to protect those backs and knees.